<laughs> Yellow lemon. The human torch was denied a bank loan. <laughs> unique New York. Unique New York. Unique New York. <laughs> unique New York. <laughs> I'm trying. Back to my eyes. It's bush league. Hey guys, and welcome. We made it back. This is Casual Critics. We're giving you episode six with me tonight. Well, who am I? Who am I? I'm Anthony Dane. That's who I am. I'm getting ahead of myself because I've got these lovely people sitting on a couch with me here. Lovely. To my left, I've got uh, my co-host, Josh Bratton. Hey, how's everyone doing? Yeah, that guy. And yeah, then me. sitting right in front of me is uh, the lovely Erica May. Hey, what's up, everyone? And then coming to us from Minnesota via Skype, that would be you, Mike Linetti. Hi. See? Hi. We're all here. Um, we've kind of been uh, putting this podcast off to every other month now just because, you know, things kind of get in the way, but... Nonetheless, we're going to try and cover everything that we can cover. We've got uh, quite a few interesting topics that we're going to talk about. I know Josh is really excited to talk about the Destiny 2 reveal. So excited. Cannot wait. All right, that was mm-hmm. on uh, the 18th, so that was just a couple of days ago, Thursday. Indeed. You watched it. Repeatedly. Erica hasn't watched any of it, right? No, not yet. No. And I know, Mike, you watched it. I did. Yeah, I'm excited. For- I only watched some of it. I, I had to work, so Josh is going to help fill me in on all the stuff. Well, I was at work, I just... Wasn't caring. <laughs> there was a reveal to watch. That's true, and it was a mighty impressive reveal, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we're also going to talk about is some Injustice 2, which I know Erica has been waiting so long to play. Oh, yes. <laughs> which is why I didn't watch Destiny, because I've been too busy playing that in my spare time. Which is fair. I've, I've played a little bit with you, but... <laughs> I mean, if you actually watch, we put a video up on uh, the pre-release day for that game of Eric and I playing, mostly her kicking my ass. He did get to win three times. That's <laughs> still not enough. It's, it's not now like close. a 22-3 to three record. It was pretty sad. Yeah, I'm pretty sad, at least when it comes to fighting games. I'm but not much better, don't worry. <laughs> I'm not afraid to admit it. Uh, so let's, uh, let's drill right through this so we can start talking about some of these cool things. Uh, first and foremost, the games that we've been playing, so we're going to spend... Just a couple of minutes, and we're going to each briefly talk about a game that we've been playing outside of the main event that we're going to be talking about today. So let's uh, let's actually start with Mike. What did you have that you had been playing that you wanted to talk about real quick? Uh, Little Nightmares. I played it, uh, I streamed it for the channel, and I beat it. Uh, it's like if Tim Burton made a video game. It looks like, you know, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas or Corpse Bride, like very claymation-y. Yeah, I uh, started watching you play that a little bit when you first started to stream it. Isn't it like a, it's a side-scroller, right? It is. You you play as this girl named Six, and you're trying to escape from this place that you just kind of wake up in, and there's just a lot of fucked up shit that happens along the way. Wait, the character's name is Six, as in the number six? Correct. Okay, my brain went elsewhere on that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it did, glance. He's like, wait, did I hear that right? Yeah. Oh, fair is it a? I haven't watched any of this. Is it similar to like the uh, like it, a darker it, it, kind it, of side scroller? It gets a lot of comparison to Limbo and Inside. Okay, okay. I enjoyed mm-hmm. Limbo. I played that back with 360. Yeah, that was actually a really fun game. Yeah, it's there's like there's no spoken dialogue. There's no text, so it's very show don't tell for story. It's very open to interpretation. So, so it's a very visual game to say the least. It is. It's got a lot of nice visuals. And just, like, the enemy design is just, like, just creepy. What like, is the combat like? There is no combat. Like, you get caught, you're dead. Oh, fair enough. Everything, yeah, everything's bigger than you. You're, like, a tiny little kid. You're just, like, the first enemy you encounter has, like, his arms are, like, six feet long. So, like, he's really messed up. And, like, his face is, like, peeled down over his eyes. So he's blind. So you got to be really, really quiet. Oh, I like it. Sounds yeah, that's kind of creepy. Game. Yeah, that sounds cool. It is. It is weird because then you encounter some chefs and they don't look right, and like you see them like reach. So it's like they're wearing masks, but it's like they look like people. So their so faces it's, are their faces are masks, but they're like yeah. skin masks. Like um. Yeah, they look like normal, disgusting people, but it's like you watch them for a little bit. They'll be chopping something up on the table. They reach under. They like scratch under their mask. It's weird. It's and it's never acknowledged. So it's like, what's going on with that? That's yes. creepy. That's a little it fucked up, cool. yeah. That sounds is, interesting. I'm going to have to watch the stream it, of that then. I want to go back and see it. I actually planned on streaming it completely because you can beat it in like an hour and there's a trophy for it. Oh, but it's just cool. like... I'll wait till it's you do 20 that and bucks. watch it then. <laughs> yeah, it's 20 bucks. I thought that's cut a little hard to swallow. If you could find it for 10, like absolutely go for it. You would not be disappointed. Your phrasing today is on point, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's, what, it's what gets me out of bed, sir. <laughs> 
like it. That and the hatred. <laughs> so for 20 bucks, not really worth it. No, if you can find it for 10 or 15, absolutely. Interpretation. And it's kind of funny because they just put out like an accolades trailer and you're like, whatever, I don't care. But like you watch the very end of it, there's like some new footage. So like there's some DLC on the way. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it's free. That would make it stomach the 20 at least and not have to. Yes. That would make No, if that's free, absolutely jump on it. But 10, 15, wait till then. Gotcha. Mm. Right. Sounds good. Very cool. I like it. I'm going to check it out. In fact, actually, I saw you playing. Um, you streamed. What was that other game? Peg. Peggle. Not Peggle. Mike, what was that? It, it was the one. It's a 2D platformer that goes into 3D. Oh, Fez. Fez. Yes. You ever Peggle. heard of that Peggle's one? Peggle's the unicorn yeah. like Peg- Marvel <laughs> game thing. That unicorn is adorable. <laughs> Although I do like Peggle. It is fun. Uh, yeah, but it's called it what? Fez? Fez. Yeah. Have you seen Fez? Uh, just on the eleventh doctor. Um, oh, that's fair. Yeah, Mike was streaming it. Um, I'll go ahead and make that mine real quick. The, so, pe- uh, Fez, Pez. I'm, I'll put them all together now. I got Peggle and Fez. That's we got Pez. Show. Pez is great. Yep. So, V platformer, and it's eight bit, which is okay. Fine. I mean, most retro games nowadays are coming out as eight bit anyway. Yeah. So it's a it's a two D platformer, and then as you're going through the world, you have the ability to shift the world, and you can see it in a three dimension. But it's it. it rotates the camera 90 degrees so you're looking at um the world from a different perspective when you turn it so it changes the environment so if you have like a a a row of blocks that make a clear path you'll obviously go across those but if you turn the camera slightly you'll see that they're all in different locations in the z dimension so you can't make that same path so you kind of have to switch the world around until it reveals the way to go that's That's actually kind of cool yeah yeah and Mm -hmm. it unveils certain secrets in the world that you wouldn't see otherwise and you kind of have to use it to get creative when jumping from platform to platform but that's that's really all there is to it it's a gimmicky game whereas if it didn't have that it would be the same as any other platformer Mm -hmm. but because of that it makes it so unique didn't they actually do a duck game or oh i'm thinking of Uh, boy no, it's in oh. it's in that movie. It's like it was Super Meat Boy, uh, Fez, and I think Binding of Isaac. Yeah, video game or yeah. what's it called? Video games. Yeah, the documentary was, or something. It's on Netflix. I was gonna say I think I've seen that. I haven't watched yeah. it, but I think I've scrolled past. It's actually yeah, he, pretty good. Yeah, he, the guy, Phil Fish, just like got his ass torn apart part on the internet. So like he actually quit the games industry, which sucked because he put out a teaser for Fez Two, and now it's not happening. So it's like. Mm. Damn you. Damn you, Internet. Damn it. The Trolls won that one. <laughs> they, did. they did. No, it's a good game, though, man. It's like there's a lot of secrets. It's like back to the old – I said it in the stream, but it's like it's back like when we were little kids before the Internet was, you know, popular. Like, oh, man, how do you get to this area? Or how do you do this? Or, you know, this code, I don't know what it means. Or, like, how do I get over here? It's like – the internet banded together. There's a lot of mysteries in that game, but like the internet just banded together and like most of them, like in the beginning, the cube is talking in like a different language. Like yep. in, in the game, if you're smart enough, you can decipher it yourself. Like there's clues around the world. So, so it's like mm. they made it too easy. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. But no. that's fair. It was a small yeah. organization of guys building that game. So it's not like yeah. we had no, great, major Great produce. game. Yeah. Makes you scratch your head. Yeah. It's uh, I think it was pretty cool. And, uh, alongside of those games, um, I- I've also actually been playing a game that Josh is really into right now, and I know you've been itching to kind of talk a little bit about this. We actually just put a stream up two days ago. Correct. I want to say, yeah. Friday night. It, um, yeah, it was uh, the day that they did a massive level reset on this game. So why don't you, why don't you talk a little about this game I'm trying to talk about here, Josh? <laughs> well, the game's Marvel Heroes Omega, which for anyone who had it for the PC for the last two, two and a half years, knows they just ported it over. Uh, Very much a Diablo cut and paste, just with Marvel heroes and villains. The the same storyline and everything alongside it. It came out, uh, they had a closed beta that went up until the 18th, and then they did a full server wipe, and now it's the early access people, which Tony and I each bought a uh, uh, Spider-Man pre-order pack, pack. founder pack, I think they called them, to be able to get in the early access and uh, a couple extra boosts and add-ons for it, but uh, they did a 24-hour uh, patching uh, update, and we started jumping on on Friday with uh, two level ones, Spider Man. And I think we're sitting about 34, 33. 35, something like that. I think I'm a level above you, but uh, we've been running through trying to, well, trying to play the crap out of it and working on some trophies already. But it's very much Diablo. 
uh, was the Spider-Man character it, Tony brought up was reminiscent of the Demon Hunter. Yeah, I was playing it last night for a little bit, and um, it, like you just said, the two characters that we have right now are based off of the character packs that we purchased to yeah. get beta, which happened to be Spider-Man, one of my favorite characters, so why not play Shocking. it? Shocking. I know. <laughs> so, I was playing it last night, and a lot of the moves that I, I've un- I've unlocked all but two of the main moves as of last night. I have them all now. Oh, today, yeah, correct. Yeah, last night. As of last night, I had all but two, so I was playing around with all the different moves to try and learn it a little better and I noticed that a couple of the moves that Spider-Man does like he does this V uh, range webbing attack that's rapid fire and I'm like that is exactly like the demon hunter in Diablo Mm. so I started looking around a little bit more and a lot of Spider-Man's moves are um, like enfeebling abilities with a lot of his webbing so he'll like put down a patch to slow enemies I'm like these are traps that Mm -hmm. the demon hunter plays so it is by far the same character almost that's really cool during the uh, closed beta, before they wiped it, I was playing as Iceman. He's very much a Frost Mage in there. It looks the same. It's the same type of you know AOE attacks, beam ranged attacks, and little you know, freeze him in place. Crowd mm, could neat. no no surprise. And I'm sure you know. I just started playing as Doctor Strange right now. He's uh, he's pretty fun, but you know, it's just the same characters that you could play with a Marvel face on most of them. So, mm. but it's it's a whole lot of fun. Yeah, you I'm can enjoying choose it. from like 30 characters too. 30 to start with, and then there we've already talked that they'll implement, I want to say the uh, additional people, I want to say the PC had anywhere from like 50 to 60 by the time, um, at, at this time right now for coming in. So, got a lot of characters to get up to uh, max level and play with, so I know what I'll be doing up until September. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, right now the only way to play it, it's a free to play game. Correct. So like Erica, when the time comes, you're going to go ahead and download this. Oh yeah, once I'm finished with Injustice. <laughs> right. I'm so, a singular so mindset. So never. Right <laughs> so never. Um, so yeah, it's a free to play game. You don't have to pay for it, but you're going to have to wait because it's actually not out yet. Like we were saying, we're still in the closed beta, and the only way to play in the closed beta is to hop on the PlayStation Store and buy one of those. They range anywhere from like fifteen to twenty dollars tops. Uh, well, mm-hmm. for singles. Uh, they have multi packs of Avengers, a Guardians, and an X Men pack mm-hmm. that are like forty, fifty, or sixty because they have different numbers of characters. In oh, it. Right, right, because it'll allow you. To but they right. have a they have a Deadpool single one, a Spider Man single one, and a, a War, War Machine. Machine that's exclusive for PS4 only, which is what we play on. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, if you you can play it right now, and whatever character level you get to on all of your characters, that will carry over to when the game is actually released. Correct. So, if you wait to buy it, or if you wait to get it when it's free to play, you're not going to be the same level as everybody else is starting. You're going to be a little bit behind. But if it's, you don't it's a quick game. leveler. Like if yeah, it goes Tony fast. and I have been kind of running through it real quick, uh, avoiding a lot of the the low level um, enemies and whatnot. Trying just try to get through the first story uh, playthrough. But if you run through, uh, you kill some time. It's like an open world, so a level one, I could be running around. Uh, downtown New York with like level 60s and they just kill everything and you getting the the same uh, experience, experience for it so you just Ooh. basically power level yourself through it without even having to know them to, be, to play with so yeah. it's fun one like that it's quite wonderful I, I suggest you take a look at our channel we put a video up there and we did kind of like a review of it as we were playing because we yeah. played it for like an hour before we started streaming so we already kind of had a handle on what we were doing so we have a review up on the channel if you want to see a full thing on that otherwise we won't talk too much more on that yeah there's a couple big during the stream we talked a little bit about some of the uh, things we weren't overly keen on a little cumbersome trying to make parties and whatnot like that but overall great game check it out but yeah that's probably your best bet for us to hear what we thought so let's uh let's get to the main event we've got two big topics to talk about and josh since you just finished talking about marble i'll give you that's a fine. rest no, no, i'm winded it's okay you're winded <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's uh, let's start talking with Injustice Two, Erica. You've been waiting a long time. Why have you been waiting so long for Injustice Two? To be because honest? the story of Injustice One was so good. The way that different villains and heroes had to um, co- coexist and change sides in order to appease the things that were happening on the alternate Earths. Um, not to mention the characters in the first game. There were only a few that I was super excited about. This one came out with um, 16 new characters plus the DLCs that they're going to do. Um, 
And a lot of those are characters that I wish they would have had in the first game, so I'm happy that they brought it in. With Injustice 2, they did a lot of upgrades. They made a new leveling system where you can actually customize loadouts for your characters, which make them more accurate and you know more deadly. Um, they changed um, a couple of other things with combat. Like, you have your 16 new characters, but the original characters that were in the first game have new moves, obviously new special moves. I liked the fact that they... Um, kind of announced the first three DLCs, but they also created a poster where everyone's in a shadow and you can't see who everyone is. But the two that I noticed um, 100% were uh, Raiden and Black Manta are on the far left and right sides of the poster in the shadow. Did you say like Raven? Raiden. Oh, from Mortal Kombat? Yeah, okay, they're going to have it. Sub Zero has already been announced as a okay. downloadable the, the character. outside of. Like, the, the characters that don't belong in that universe but are still fighting characters. Yeah, which is like really even, cool. Well, they did Scorpion in the first game, in right. the first Injustice. And even in other DLC. fighting games, like, um, there, there was another fighting game. It was, like, Marvel vs. It wasn't Marvel vs. Capcom. It was another one where they implemented Spawn, if you had an Xbox. Oh, mm -hmm. and, like, um, there was Darth Vader for another one. For another, yeah. yeah. They had different oh, consoles specific. Yeah. I'm blanking on which game that was, but, yeah, they had a lot of additional, like, movie characters come out of. And, yeah, That's so Soul was, Calibur? Soul Calibur, that's there exactly it what it was. You're right. I was going to say, this is not a very informative podcast if we can't even think of the game. Right yeah, wasn't it like Darth Vader and Yoda, and I think it was Link for... There was the Link, and I think, I think they had uh, horror guys come through. I think like uh, oh, Freddy, Freddy, Kruger, Freddy, Freddy and Jason, Freddy. I think, were both... Oh, yeah, they did. Yep. Later. So that's the same kind of scenario with this. We're bringing in outside characters. I'm actually excited to play uh, Sub Zero because he was my guy. In yeah, Mortal Kombat. I think a lot. I think that's why they threw him in because a lot of people are excited to see him. I always love a nice character. Um, mm -hmm. The controls are the same as the original game. Um, they just, like I said, they added a lot more moves, um, a lot more meter burns. I like the fact that they had less environmental objects for you to throw at people, so you don't yeah. get as many cheap shots. You're actually having to play each other. It got overrated real quick. Yeah. Um, it's like, oh, so it's the last hit, and you're just going to launch this thing across the screen at me and kill me. That's great. Not even give me a chance to defend myself. Hey, that's how you play with me. Uh, that's not true. <laughs> well, she just likes to tease you. It's like, here, um, here you go. There are 12 chapters in the story mode. I'm working all weekend, so I haven't been able to finish it. I'm on chapter 10 right now. I'm almost done. Um, I do know, possible spoiler alert, that in the very last chapter you have to pick between Batman and Superman. And instead of previous chapters where you're playing as a team, you can alternate each battle and pick a different person. Whether you pick Batman or Superman, you are stuck with that person through every match of the 12th chapter. I got it. Which is kind of hmm. cool. Um, which is good because when I came over and you were playing story mode, you got to choose between Blue Beetle and Firestar. Mm -hmm. Firestorm. Firestorm. Yeah. Firestorm. Firestorm. And uh, they yeah, had a black. They had a black canary, green arrow one, which was my favorite chapter to play because they're two of my favorite characters. Um, the brave and the bold. They yeah, and they even they even mention that they say <laughs> we must be brave and be bold. Um, <clears throat> the thing that I found the most interesting on this game is they give you rewards and money, and you can like I said customize the loadouts. Well, you can go to this thing called the Brother Eye Vault, and you decode a mother box, and you earn a certain amount of silver ones, a certain amount of bronze ones, a certain amount of gold ones, and gear to equip. At first, I kept earning things that were level 20, and none of my characters are level 20, so I couldn't equip them to anyone. But then I started decoding those mother boxes, and now I've you know gathered up some like level 3 things and level 4 things to go with my characters that I am playing with most that it's, have higher level. That's fair. It's kind of like either getting an engram or one of those boxes oh, from yeah. Destiny where it would just open up a plethora of stuff. And you never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Exactly. Certain chapters, and um, you can get them from online battles and things like that too, so it's not just a story mode where you can get those, although it probably is easier and you'd probably get more. Easier, yeah, but you're, the rewards are probably greater in PvP. Most likely, I would probably. imagine. I did yeah. play my first online match today, and I got my butt kicked because <laughs> the guy was a level 38, and I'm a level 18. So, yeah. But, I mean, he, I've, they've already kind of put online who they think the cheating characters are or the characters that are a little bit... Um, to avoid playing with? Yeah, to avoid playing like, against. Who's that so far? Um, Robin is one. Yeah, uh, he's a cheap little fucker. And Deadshot level. is another one because he can just continuously <laughs> shoot his gun across the screen. What about Flash? That's not um, my favorite. Flash hasn't been noted as like a hard character to beat, but he is definitely in the top characters as far as strength goes. As far as ass hattery goes. <laughs> yeah, just ass hattery. It's up, complete ass hattery, but it's awesome. They made his moves really, really cool. Um, obviously, I'm a female, so I like to start with the girls and work my way through the guys. 
Black Canary is my favorite so far because she's a lot like Batgirl from the first game. That's true. As we were going through in the release, you went through all your characters. You played every single person once, like yeah. we were planning on doing. Yeah. And then as soon as you played the last female character, you're like, well, there's no one else to play. I'm like, bullshit! I <laughs> like playing with the girls. I, I wish there were more girls in this game. I'm glad that they're going to uh, bring out Starfire and, um, oh, I forget what the other girl they possibly said might come into play later. But they also give you different um, skins you can put on to make everyone's colors different so you can customize each character. I do like that part. Yeah. And I know, Mike, you're a whore for... Um... In general, but I mean, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. It's all about look cool, like I mean, customizable. Yeah, I was, customizable. I did that in Destiny too. Whenever I got the stuff, I was really interested in trying to like find the right color for everything. And they actually right. change the way stuff looks on that game too. It's not just like when you get a new set of guns for Harley Quinn, it just ups your health or your damage. It actually looks completely different. Oh, you'll get like a new looking mm. gun. A and new looking for weapon. Yeah, oh, it's really cool. cool. I like that better than just hey, there's a plus five same looking item. Which is exactly yeah. how Marvel is playing right now. Correct. You get a bunch of items, but your character Never avatar changes. doesn't change. They do have costumes mm. with that, but yeah, not to the customization level that it's I'm, I'm glad has. that they incorporated something like that because it makes it a lot more interesting mm -hmm. um, there's also the guild setting now where you can uh, set up guilds and do different missions to get different stuff quests which is really cool uh, extra rewards mm -hmm. extra yeah, things. probably more currency huh. I like that more currency I haven't uh, sold anything yet mostly because I'm just trying to collect everything I have but you can also sell things to get more money to buy other things or yeah. combine other um, things that you can equip definitely worth the money um, I wish they would do more maps on the DLC because I mean you get tired of fighting in the same arenas and only I mean, some there? of them change yeah, at least six only some of them have eight. level transitions there are a few that do not so you how many total maps are there I mean, of course I didn't take a note of that so map. we're mentally looking at the board right now she's counting them out like I want to say there's 10, maybe 8, right. but they do have some of them who have level transitions means you can start in a different area of the arena and then if you level transition someone you'll end in the other area of the arena. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see just, you know, they don't even have to do a whole bunch, just like maybe on the first or second DLC toss in another 5 just to keep it interesting and keep it fresh. You know, maybe do something that's, um, I could do like an Arkham City actual thing where they're in Arkham, like the game of Arkham City as background kind of thing. Um, I'm looking forward to playing all of it through um, continuously and many times. I think it's worth it. I'll be excited to see the new DLC characters. So far they've announced Red Hood, Starfire, Sub-Zero, and like I said, you can see Black Manta in that poster. So I'm excited to see who else they throw in there. I think they'll probably bring Nightwing in, but the fact that there's a point where you can play as Damien, who the Robin in this game is Damien Wayne, and there's a point where you can play as him basically as Nightwing um, later on in the game when you play against him as that. So I'm, I'm assuming that they're probably going to make that a way that you can play later. You can equip the baton instead of the sword. Well, yeah, I mean, they got to keep people interested by releasing new skins, new characters to play. Yeah. I'd like to see the Huntress maybe hmm. um, just because she's Green Arrow mixed with Black Canary. So she has projectiles mm -hmm. and she'd be a good hand-to-hand -hand combat player. That'd be fun for me. I like the hand-to-hand -hand combat fighters. They like to get up on people and beat the crap out of yeah, them. Yeah, they do. So. Currently, we're playing both the we're same playing character, but two entirely different ways. Yeah, mm -hmm. like Josh, your build for Spider-Man is all melee close I'm combat. I'm all up in the business there. I'm all up in your business. hanging out in the background using so the So are like twiddling his thumbs, like, letting me do most of the work. It's fine. Well, I'm enfeebling them <laughs> and feebling hitting them from a range with my Spider-Man. So that's, that's kind of cool that you can do that. It is really great that they... Um, when you play, like when I play Tony, I can change it and equip it to where our levels are the same. Yeah, there's because, a handicap. Yeah, there's a okay, handicap. Because cool. if not, I would be beating Kick the, the crap out of him. Yeah. Because Which you already a do. few of my oh, characters are higher level. switch their handicap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or if anything, you can put Tony at the higher level and still kick his ass with a three. That's probably true. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's very accurate. true. <laughs> It sounds like a lot of fun. I'm terrible at fighting games. I enjoy them. I was a big fan of like Mortal Kombat and Marvel vs. Capcom and Street Fighter, but I get my ass kicked anytime I try and go online. I'm a button masher. I have no like finesse while playing. So See, terrible. the online play is going to be difficult for me, but I enjoy the things that they've added to where I can expand and not just play until my character... You're not forced until to. Until like, I'm you done. You do other stuff. Right. It's like, oh, the story mode's over? Okay, well, I'm bored. Yeah. yeah, I have other stuff, stuff, a lot there. of other stuff I can do now. And with the guild thing you're talking about, that sounds, you know, it's easy to 
you yeah. find people be in a guild or even just like one on one play that through. right create your own yeah. which is really cool and a lot of them are free play some of them you have to have a certain amount of players it looks like so that's really neat too I haven't expanded my gaze on that very much because I'm just trying to get through the story mode it's still fairly new is it what less than a week was it on Tuesday you guys did that or am I am I losing a week already it was Monday Monday night, okay. It was Monday night. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's... I did get Dark Side as the early deal, as the early character, because I pre-ordered. And he's slow and big and boring. Scarecrow's another really awesome character that they added and this year. And guess who the hell is the voice actor for Scarecrow? Uh, Nobody? Nobody? You're Troy so Baker? I was no. You do it. no. But of course it's it'd be Troy fucking Baker. Troy Baker. It's hmm. Freddy Krueger. Oh, that oh. doesn't surprise me at yeah. all. That's super cool. Did not know that. I didn't look that up. Yep. Kevin Conroy is the voice of Batman. He is the true and Batman. And, Strong it's a, and Tara Harley. Strong is Harley, which is great. And they really got Harley right this time. The, the way she looks, her behavior. I love that they have the hyenas incorporated too. Yep. Um, who's the... Uh, who's the? Uh, there's another voice actor that's really famous who's on here too. He's a, an actor. We see him in a lot of movies. The only movie that comes to mind right now is when he, he's in A Knight's Tale. He's um, oh. the tall, gangly guy who's always... Got a bit of rage, and he's trying to fong those. Oh. That that character actor plays the voice of Robin. Everybody's trying to look it up right oh, now. Now we're all looking. Yeah, I'll phones. let you guys do it. That's I kind of didn't really me. look up who was no idea the voices. I, those were only Conroy and Strong. Only two I knew off the top of my head. Conroy is really the only major important one because well. digital. Animated Batman isn't Batman unless it's Kevin Conroy. It's right? very true. But they always cast. I was a little bit bummed as a as an Arrow fan from the CW that they didn't try and bring that's Steven Amell on. That's that's who the guy. The guy I'm trying to talk about is the guy who plays Arrow. Oh, okay. He's the famous one. Is what yes, we're talking about. that guy. That's who it was. He's all over the board. I had a big old brain fart. <laughs> um, I was a little bit bummed. I'll, I'll be excited if they bring on the, the skins like they did in the previous game where you can play as different character versions, and that'd be really cool if they would bring him back on to play the voice yes. of the Green Arrow. That'd you can do that with sweet. a lot of people. I'd love to see uh, Mark Hamill do Joker as well. Yes. Yes. That would be fantastic. That I would, would put him and Conroy cool. together. i just play those two all the time just to hear like the... The, just to the hear voices, the banter. Yeah, and that's, and oh, that's another great thing. Thank you for reminding me. You oh. just reminded me when you said Huzzah. that. Um, when you battle characters, there is a different introduction that each character has with each other. Ah. There's different exchanges. So when Black Canary goes to fight Deadshot, she'll say one thing. If you go to fight him again, she will say something else. But it's always directed at the character that she's speaking to. Like okay. Captain Cold, the first time I thought you would have made one hell of a rogue. And then the next time he said something completely different. Oh, okay. Which is really For cool. each character. So if there are 10 characters, each character would have 18 different flavor texts when they come in. Mm-hmm. That's math. math. I was told there would be no math. That was quick I was math. To- I was told there that was be- simple Oh, quick Alan math. Tudyk. Alan yes, Tudyk. That guy. That is who does the voice of Green Arrow in this. Oh, wash. Yeah. Wow, that is a very long, like, connect the dots we just did to find it, it out. Took, it took a moment. Well, we it don't have a, a fact checker with us, and typically we don't use one for these kind of things. Yes, so. and Robert England, that's who did the voice the of Scarecrow. Scarecrow. Yep. Correct. Right. All right, now that we've got the voices down. Yes. Okay, yeah. But yeah, overall, worth the money. If you want to splurge and get the um, Unlimited to where you can get all of the DLCs, I would highly suggest doing that, because I'm that's what I did. I'm not going to have to did pay for it. Did that push it to, like, a... Was it like a seventy nine ninety nine one, or was it more expensive? Oh, it was a hundred. It was over hundred. It was a hundred for uh-huh. the full DLC. Gotcha. Yeah, and I, I paid sixty, 60 for that I game. Paid the and you have the iron tin for it. Too, yeah, I got. It edition. comes in a nice iron tin collected case. It's really, really nice. Yeah, what check out post? our Instagram. I, I put a picture of uh, the <laughs> bonus that they gave us at GameStop for the release of this. They gave us a, a little soccer jersey and uh, the tin case for the game. Yep. And they released it at nine to all people who pre-ordered. So thanks, yeah. GameStop. So oh, we got to play got it three that stream hours early. before the review. Super excited about it. Yep. Nice. I'm gonna have to check that out. And by check that out, I mean watch you. Stream watch it again. Watch me. Kick watch Tony's you guys. Ass. Yeah, you guys can stream again. Mm-hmm. Check it out. Just so I can talk trash to Tony and not have to back it up and get my ass kicked. Oh no, I'm gonna make you play. <laughs> She's gonna. Whoop I'll give you three too. chances. And I'll lose them all. <laughs> right. So that's really cool. Uh, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. At least when I go over there. Yeah, he's he's watched me play a little bit of the story mode. It's it's a really good story too. I haven't finished it obviously, but it's leading up to something really cool. I have a feeling so. Yes, I, I'm a big fan of it. I like it. Excellent. Um, so we've got one other thing that we're gonna talk about. A big major thing that's uh, sweeping the news of the internet gamers, scratching their heads and getting back into that 
little schoolgirl feeling of, oh my god, I can't wait for this game to come out again, because most of us have not been playing it, at least I know I haven't been playing it. Josh, you've been playing it quite a bit, and that's the original Destiny, but here I'm going to talk about Destiny 2, the release that was given to us on Thursday. I know, Josh, you've got quite a bit of notes, and you've seen a little bit more into this than I have, unfortunately. So Correct, yeah, I watched the could, full uh, reveal uh, the day of, and then I've gone back and hit up a couple of the streamers that I like who actually had a chance to go out to the reveal and get hands-on gameplay and watch some of that. Uh, I saw a bit of PvP um, and uh, the first uh, strike or story mission that they had going on uh, for Destiny 2. Uh, so it looks amazing. I am beyond excited for this. I want to know the beta date or the release date for the beta so I can start playing that. Because I don't really want to wait till September 8th whatsoever. Like, it's so far away. I just want it now. I want to be able to get into it. It is a closed beta, which is what the most developers seem to be doing nowadays for these yep. big releases. Uh, it's a closed stuff. beta, so the only way to get into it is to pre-order the game. I know, Mike, you found a way around that, didn't you? Oh, I, did, I did that with the alpha and the beta for Destiny 1. You just uh, pre-order on Amazon. They email you the code, and then you cancel the pre-order. That's evil. I love it. So yeah, if you want to, uh, if you if you're afraid to jump into this game, but you still want to be able to play the beta, the beta, the beta, the, the, the beta, beta. Um, it's not that I'm suggesting you do this, but we <laughs> found a way to get around it. If you don't want to cash out all that money, we're for not us. telling you to do it, but there's yeah. ways to figure that out if you go look on the internet. It's not hard. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. So the only way to play the closed beta right now is to pre-order the game. Well, once I'll probably that, play yeah. it. It's just PSN charges your credit card as soon as you buy it. It's like, right. and I don't want to pass out a hundred bucks right now. So exactly, I did. I threw it right at the screen. <laughs> Big wide hat. Take my money. Yep. We went over there and got it. Yep. But it's if it's as epic as they say it's going to be, if it's anywhere near the amazing game they gave us of Destiny One, then obviously I'm not going to have any problems with it. I'm going to pay that hundred dollars for it. Plus, we got the little uh, K9 the figure. Yeah, 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 you're right. Uh, we want to little... get that before it's sold out, too. The cute little mm -hmm. That'll go up on the uh, Instagram page as well. So take a look at that. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the Destiny reveal, Josh. Okay. Um, well, it starts off with... Uh, well, one of the things in Destiny 1 is we... The DLC is focused on each of the uh, enemy races, for the most part. Like the raids and the DLC is focused on the Hive or the Vex um, or the random new one, the uh, Taken they had. But the one we never really got was a Cabal-based raid or like a Cabal-centered storyline for it. So the opening of the trailer they released, which you see on Bungie's website or all over the internet, is a huge, from the Cabal, coming to the, uh, the tower and the Traveler, who's the source of all our powers for this, and they basically just kick the crap out of us. They lock the Traveler away so we don't have our powers. They destroy like our home base and everything. And the story starts with the three main NPCs being... Uh, Ikora Ray, Zavala, and uh, Cade. Uh, One of each. Correct. Uh, class. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Ikora is Warlock a and Hunter. Yeah, is, is, uh, so there are split to new worlds that we haven't seen before. Um, there's a Vex world uh, called Nessus, which is where Cade ends up. Um, he's hanging out there after the. Because we all scatter to survive. Uh, there's a moon uh, or Io a planet that's um, a uh, it's like a the last place that the traveler gave his power to and like put guardians around. There's a lot of story behind this. I can't go into all of it. Like if you want to look into it, you can. But uh, there's a lot of backstory that uh, I really just can't touch on for all of it. But uh, that's where Ikora is, and then Zavala's on Titan, which is no real land. It's all just like buildings over water. So they're spread Titan. out the full use of it. But they show them doing like pretty badass like ninja moves like spinning and flipping and twirling it on his back and just beating the crap out of him so those are the three main additional subclasses that they put for it to use um there are a lot of other changes god i could go on for days with this but <laughs> all right um you still have your basic grenade and melee attack but they now have uh, an additional like it's not quite a super, but like it's somewhere in between. So you have like your basic uh, uh, like abilities. Bef before you had a melee ability and a grenade ability. Yes. So now you have the same two and a new one? There's a third one. I've only seen the Warlock one. Um, it is where you drop this little circular energy bubble, or not bubble, but like a just a circle on the ground, and you have two choices. You can either spec it to give you increased damage from your weapons, 
when you stand in it, mm -hmm. or you can spec it for healing, and each time you come back into it, it starts to re, uh, recharge your shields and your health, and I'm not 100% for allies as well, but at least for you. So, you, uh, so either a DPS bubble or a support bubble? Correct. So they're giving the Warlocks a little more to do in terms of not just rising from the dead. Because that's really... <laughs> yeah, and that got really cheap, too, because we would use it to cheese a lot of the raids. Yep. So it gives you a little more support for it, a uh, little more utilitary. That's fair. And I, I think they changed something about the gun settings, too. So, like, they, they adjusted the primary, secondary, and heavy to being a... To, there's, like, a static... There's a... There's a Elemental, uh, kinetic, or like you know, just a bullet one, and then there's uh, an energy or power one, and I don't know where they moved everything to, but they've God, they've they put a lot of new weapons in. There's I've seen in some of the videos a grenade launcher. I've seen there's a submachine gun now. There are um, this crazy looking rocket launcher that it has been in the data code from people of mine Destiny One, but we never saw it come through. Mm -hmm. So that name's popped up. Um, there are times when you're gonna be able to tank. Like, there's vehicles reminiscent of Halo-ish. I don't know if that's strictly for strikes or patrol or how that works, but I saw someone in a tank shooting stuff. Nice. Um, we're going to get more interaction with NPCs out in the world, not necessarily just talking to them, but they will kind of join along and help us. In the opening sequence, the very first mission, you see Zavala putting bubbles up yep. during the battle and helping you out that you actually have to interact, which is something people have asked for instead of just watching the sweeping bot stand in the corner for two and a half years getting that same spot nice and clean. Yeah. True. Which is funny because if you watch the Revere trailer, everything's blowing up around the tower. Everyone's like evacuating. That bot's still doing his job. There's like a big <laughs> hole in the wall and he's just still sweeping yep. the exact same spot. Um, other changes they made for PvP is they are changing. Um, the Instead of 6v6, everything's going to be a 4v4 um, to kind of make it a little more competitive. Yep, all game modes are going to be 4v4 now. Four on four. Correct. So a little less chaotic, a little more uh, teamwork in terms of what you're doing. Instead of just a you know an enemy being right behind you at any point, you can kind of work as a team. It's you got to travel more ground. Um, hmm. There's going to do a new uh, HUD for that system too in terms of telling when people have their supers ready, uh, when they picked up heavy ammo in Crucible. Um, like the power, the super powerful ammo that only spawns like once around. Yeah, the, yeah. Um, so there'll be a HUD that'll tell you when people have that to try and like Ooh. help you plan for what you're doing. So if you know someone's got their two supers and all the heavy, you can uh, coordinate an attack and try and take them out and stuff like that. Um, they've made changes for, uh, well, I'm jumping back into PVE right now, but. Uh, God, get your shit together, Josh. Dude, right, look, all right, first off, when I take notes, they're all over the place. So I'm literally jumping between three pages right now, trying to figure out everything that's going on. Like, I could probably talk for an hour by myself about this, but I'm trying to hit the main stuff. One of the things they focused on was matchmaking and being able to get uh, casual players and hardcore players together uh, easier. They've now made it, uh, you can do matchmaking for everything. Trials of Osiris, which is the competitive, um, high-end, uh, PvP, Crucible, uh, the Nightfall, and the Raid will all have a matchmaking. So if you're, you and your buddy are trying to do some of the high-end stuff and you can't get in, you know, you don't have six people, you can pop in there and they'll throw anywhere from two, four, six, however many people you need together to go play it. Which is great, because even in the first one, Tony and I both have not finished the most recent DLC raid, just because we haven't been able to sync up with the guys we normally play with. So, that would be nice right. to be able to one night sit down and just be like, alright, we're doing this with whoever shows up. The clan stuff. Yep. Yeah, I'm actually really excited for that. That's the clan the stuff thing. sounds really interesting. Yeah, that, that's the only thing that we've been bitching about to Bungie for two years now, is being able to do the clan thing. Well, bitched about was like a, a, a macro... You know, like a, a quick macro button that'll switch loadouts so I can switch between PvP, PvE, bring in Prison of Elders or Trials of Osiris and have their own built so I don't have to go in and rebuild yeah. it every single time. Well, they've done that. Um, not uh, macro, but they've made a lot of things easier for you. One of the biggest things that Tony and I always hated too was you to go to any event in the game, you would have to go to orbit first and then pick where you need to go, be it another world to go do patrols to do Crucible, to do Raid. Uh, with the new game, you can go to, you can pick anything you want to do strictly wherever you are. Like if you're in the tower, you want to go to Mars, click Mars, you don't have to go to Rip, boom, you're heading your own way. So they've made it easier. Cut down the time, you're going to be watching your ship do the same floaty motion across stars. 
every time. Which is good. Although, I'm not going to lie, I did kind of use that oh, of as course. my downtime. So if I needed to check something on my phone, or if I needed to go get a glass of water, if I needed something for a minute, I could always rely on the Destiny the longest amount of time to be able to accomplish my mini task. So that's going to be a little sad, but at the same time, I'm sure we're all going to be happy that it's there. Oh, it's going to be great. I'm going to love it. <laughs> um, without taking up too much time, the last thing I really want to hit on is what Tony mentioned, and it's clans. Mm -hmm. um, they are implementing kind of similar to if you've ever played WoW where you could have your whole guild or clan together that you can build rewards for within your group. You know, you might have a hardcore guy who plays every day for four hours or you have someone like me who pops on on the weekend when he can to do a couple raids or strikes or whatnot. So you and your buddies can get together, start a clan. Um, as you do, as you're playing, you earn rewards and better gear and everything like that. Uh, but they also have implemented that uh, you can have, it's called a guided games, where it can mix, if you have, if Tony and I have a clan of four people, and there's two people, two single players who want to do the raid, which is a six-man thing, you can request people from a clan to see if you like the group of people, if you fit with them, to try and join them. So it's easy for you to be able to join a, a clan if you're a solo player. Right, because there have been plenty of times when I'd be playing Destiny 1 by myself, and I'm loading up a, a strike map. And, you know, it has to search for two other people. Yep. And you always get that one clown who waits at the starting point. <laughs> Correct. We'll run in, we'll start fighting the boss and everything, and he's nowhere to be found. We don't even know if he's there. So it's really just two. You work at <laughs> Leroy Jenkins running yeah. around stuff. <laughs> exactly. A Leroy Jenkins. So this is, uh, this is definitely a huge improvement to be able to make sure that you're playing with people that actually want to play and you're not getting that ass clown that's trying to run in. And do their own thing. Or on the reverse, if they want to sit there and not do anything. I'm not sure if they will do this, but it'd be nice if there's like a timer after so long that that person would be pulled from the strike. So Yep, an um, auto kick. And Fuck, even a manual kick would be nice. That's, well, that gets you tricky because then you just people would just kick people for no reason. But Bye. <laughs> That's happened to show. me before. Actually, that has. What? But, yeah, back when I used to play um, actual MMOs like Final Fantasy XI, uh, Final Fantasy XIV, I never really played WoW, but... I also I played, um, you did? No, oh, I was a wild guy for a while. There was uh, Dark Age of Camelot, and um, I'm sure there's another one that I'm spacing on. But yeah, when you make a character, it's usually like I would have a mule character, a dummy yep. character to hold all my gear oh, yeah. before storage was a thing. And I'd name it the stupidest shit, you know? Just like how you name your characters. Oh, uh, mine are Josh. all stupid. I, I try and make the weirdest names possible for mine. Like, what was the one that you named your... What did you name your Chocobo in Final Fantasy XV? Oh, god damn it. You don't remember? Oh, I thought you were going to ask me about Diablo ones, not oh, the yeah, Chocobo. Oh, well, yeah, sure. What, what were well, your I've got, I've, got, <laughs> I've got Sir Ducats and uh, uh, Meat Tarps. Um, I've, <laughs> meat tarps. Yeah, I've got a bunch of random-ass names for stuff. What was that? Something Mix Something was my Chocobo. Yeah, it was something perverted. But something. Mick Buttface... I can't what remember. Re I it, it took me a minute because obviously they try and ban some of the words. So I was I spent way too much time <laughs> trying, trying to figure to, out how to get trying to get ball. around it. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm I'm a 12 year old in a 36 year old's body. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, but yeah. So it's nice that if you get booted or you someone leaves, they can pull someone through. And they've actually done that with raids now too. Like if you've got six people and Tony's got to go to bed or whatever, and he bounces out you can set it to search for a solo player who's looking to come in and help you finish that raid instead of having to like get Back on your friend on yeah or get it on your friends list and spam everybody being like hey can you jump in here for 10 minutes and help us finish this it'll bring someone in to finish it up for you that's cool Right, and they um, also did with what you would just said before we started getting on a tangent about that is um, the, the clan thing that adds experience and stuff to the rest of your clan members despite Correct. them not being there. Uh, it's like, you know, I, I don't know exactly how to complete the raid. Here's plus a thousand points towards getting rewards, like a next level of your oh, clan. Oh, so it's like leveling up, up the clan. Yeah, so Very you... similar to how Call of Duty clans worked. Correct. Correct. Excellent. Something along those lines. So it, it's... It'll be good. You can. It's easy for you to find clans to add more people, and then the hardcores and the casuals can all earn rewards evenly by ha you know and not feeling like they're left out because I can't go run the raid or I can't play high end uh, PvP stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna be interesting. We're gonna have to see all the guys we used to play with in Destiny One to see who's still gonna be around for the next one and see if we can't put together a decent little clan to run stuff. Yep, um, be interesting. 
And unfortunately, Mike kind of got booted from uh, Skype. He was having some bad weather in Minnesota, so his connection got lost. But um, this this is going to kind of go towards him. He, um, he he played the beta for Destiny 1, but never got into the actual game. And as, ma- as many times as we've tried to get Mike to play with us... We've tried. Yeah, we've, we've tried. We've even offered a power level him and everything. And he's just like, no, nah, more of a uh, multiplayer-based game. And that's actually true. Now, with the second one coming out, there's a couple of things worth noting to begin with. First and foremost... The only thing that will transfer over from Destiny 1 to Destiny 2 is your character avatar. Correct. Your hunter, your titan, your warlock, however you made them look at the time of character creation is the only thing that will carry over. Your vault is completely empty. I mean, with the story opening up with the tower being attacked by uh, the Mars, cabal. by the yeah, Cabal. By yeah. the cabal. Uh, they've, also, they've incorporated you having to start over in a very unique way that they actually have it in the story so there's a reason behind why you're having to start over the vault has been destroyed all of your guns everything that you had from your one is gone um gotta find all new gear all new specialty stuff right the, some the of traveler, them look amazing though there's yeah a, there's I've seen a, a lot of those there's a warlock one that I saw with like some flaming gold wings that it's an exotic I'm guessing and I must have that one I'm going to get that right away well and of course because they also said that um it's going to be on PC as well granted uh, PS4 is gets the exclusive content. Xbox gets at the same time that PlayStation does, except for that. But when it comes to PC, it's going to be hosted on Battle.net through Blizzard. So that's going to be a little interesting. So I can kind of see why they're doing that as an item, because everything in Blizzard has that wing... Angelic-looking, yeah. Yeah, whether it be look Diablo, uh, Overwatch, yep. they all have its... Um, Wow. It also tells you probably why the clan thing is being implemented since they do that for WoW and whatnot. It's yep. really going to be easy to pull that through. So now you'll be able to be similar. sitting there playing WoW and you'll see that your Destiny friends are on and you can hop over to that, which will be nice. But um, they, they've incorporated it into the story in a very nice way. So uh, I, I know that I never paid attention to the story in Destiny 1, so maybe well, I'll actually pay attention in this one. They had the Grimoire cards that you would earn as you would go stuff, and they would have bits of story with it, but you couldn't look at that in-game, and there was no, like, uh, like voiceover like you could listen to the stuff. So you would have to go online and read the thing and then try and understand, because some of it got really weird. Like, it, there's a whole lot of story and, like, history they put into Destiny that I can't figure out because I can't decipher half the stuff they're talking about. So yeah. I'm hoping in this one it'll be easier for us to look at and be like, here's the history of why the Guardians are here or what the Traveler's doing and all that extra stuff. And the one thing is, is the first raid that they gave us was the Vault of Glass in Destiny 1. And so I, good. Yeah, it, it really was. Um, it, it seems to me that based off of the story and everything associated with the Vex, they also seem like they could be a puzzle-driven uh, clan, society... What do you want to call them? They're all robots. It's not it's like a, it's we'll a, call them a race. They're a all race. basically a race. I think they're sentient robot type things. Okay, so it, it seems as though they could be a puzzle-based driven race. So I would love to be able to see some like puzzle-driven story missions in there. I mean, the the whole raid itself, the Vault of Glass, yeah. with every Figuring mechanic out what in to it, do. it was just a big puzzle. Oh, yeah. Give me more. Well, you're a huge fan of puzzle games anyway. I love puzzles. Mist, and then the one that you just were working the on. Witness. Recently. Witness, yeah. Yep. I watch you play that, and I'm like, I help a little bit, but then I'm like, nope, confused. I, I'm not thinking right now. We'll pass. Yeah, I love puzzles. But yeah, I'll be interested to see what all they could do with it. And now that they've uh, jettisoned all last-gen consoles, so Xbox 360 and PS3 yes. no longer are supported with the new game, so they have the whole width and breadth of the systems to be able to play with. It means the world should look better and more beautiful and everything like that, so I'm excited to see what they can do. Should look much more better. Yeah, much more better? Much more better. Did I say that or you just make it fun? Um, a little either, bit I probably could have, but either way. But yeah, I just want the beta, honestly. I want the beta here. I'm hoping early, mid-June. Um, I would like to be able to play the beta for like three months, but <laughs> now I'm feeling awkward as my two co-hosts at the table stare lovingly at each other. <laughs> I wouldn't say lovingly. I'm just waiting for her to chime in to say, oh, I can't wait to play Destiny 2. I'll be there on game day. Or... Well, you know. Maybe we could work around on the it's beta possible. first. It's possible. It's possible. I've never played the first one, so then I feel like I'd have to go back and play that and get the story. It just so I'm happens glad you brought downstairs. That up. Really? Because there are two PS4s <laughs> with the game. Well, I deleted one. mine. There's one PS4 oh, with the game loaded one. onto it. 
that you could play right now and test out. Oh, that's good um, information to have. I don't think it's, about it. It's actually really good that you brought that up, too, because like I said, nothing is carrying over in Destiny 2. It's starting yep. fresh, which means every Brand single new. person that starts up Destiny 2 is starting at the same level base. Nobody will have an advantage here. Okay, well then no maybe previous, I will. There's there no is. previous DLCs. There's nothing. You it's just a get brand them. new game. Well then maybe I will. The only thing you'll miss out on is, like I said, story. If you wanted to try and go back and figure out what Destiny was, but there I'll just are look YouTube up, videos. I was gonna say there's YouTube videos or Wikipedia. It's called the internet. It gives me all my information. I don't need it. <laughs> everything on the internet is true. <laughs> Not Believe everything. It all. Absolutely. So that's but that's cool. that's what I've got right now. Like I said, I could keep talking about Destiny and all the things hoping for, but uh, like there's. Yeah, there's like treasure rooms and uh, treasure maps and lost sectors and more NPCs and side missions. There's a lot going on. So as we get closer, we'll get more. <laughs> what What's that? I said a Nathan Fillion. Oh, uh, yep. Nathan Fillion there. is coming <laughs> back as the voice of the ghost to replace. No, uh, Nathan Fillion is K. You're talking about. Uh, oh yeah, I'm North. talking of um, Nolan North. Nolan yes. North does okay. the ghost. Yeah. So Nolan North is coming back yes. to replace his role as the ghost, replacing Dinglebot. Dinglebot. And, I still love that name. Yes, and Nathan Fillion is, of course, coming back as Cade. He's... Tony's favorite play, like, character, the hunter. Yeah, I love the hunter. Mm-hmm. I, am, I was a warlock, hunter, he was a hunter. True. And I'll probably still be a hunter. And I think Mike said he's going to try out the hunter, too, because Nathan Fillion. <laughs> it's Nathan Fillion. And that's probably what you'll do, too. Probably. Nathan Fillion. Yeah, Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion. <laughs> Nathan Fillion. <laughs> Nathan Fillion. <laughs> But yeah, so we just give us this beta. Let's get it so we can try <laughs> it out. Nathan At the, that's the whole this podcast. It's just <laughs> episode Fillion. seven or six, Nathan Fillion. Yep, that's actually how it's going to be labeled from here on out. It's <laughs> going to be Casual Critics brings you episode six, Nathan, Nathan Fillion. Fillion. <laughs> and then seven will bring up some other actor that we fall in love with. It's Josh, Josh Brolin. Brolin. In a world <laughs> where a man needs to be represented well, first via off, podcast. Josh Brolin's looking amazing, getting ready for his role as Cable, by the way. What role Well, Josh not... Brolin play next? <laughs> well, he's got DC, we were he's talking got Marvel. About, we and, were talking yeah. about this the other night, about how we were watching Hellboy, and he was like, who could play Hellboy now? Like, seriously. And I was like, Josh Brolin? And he's with, like, oh my god, it totally could You know they're redoing that with the guy. Yeah. From, okay, I was just like... With the guy from... Um, Stranger Things. I forget his name. Yeah, the, the, the guy the who... Which is also what brought us into this tangent. Because he the, looks the like... The cop who's going to... Who just got cast as... Or who hasn't been cast yet, but who's up for the role of Hellboy 2. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was originally up for the role of Cable. And then yeah. who got the role of Cable? Josh Brolin. <laughs> so who's going to get the role of Hellboy? Who can we see play Hellboy? Who's it going to be? Josh, Josh Brolin. Brolin. A brooding man in a world <laughs> where Josh Brolin plays every character. Come see the new summer hit. Josh, Josh Brolin, Brolin is. If anyone's every still listening character. to this part where we've tangent off into <laughs> Josh Brolin trailer trailer voices for Josh Brolin movies, um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes, for the most part, that's um, kind of what we wanted to touch base on yeah. is uh, the two major things that happened this month, the beginning of the month being Injustice 2, so thank you for that, Erica. Ooh. All the um, info. So good. Yep. And, Go buy um, it. Destiny 2 release. Thank you, Josh. Oh, you're welcome. Mike left us. Um, go ahead. <laughs> Slacker. <laughs> he didn't mean to. He no, he did. He, he was like, I'm out. It. Screw you guys. Yeah, that's probably what it was. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, so let's see. Coming up next month in the month of June, there are really only two games that are... Well, I mean, one game coming out and the rest are DLC. The game that's expected for <laughs> June is the Insane Trilogy. It's the remake of Crash 1, 2, and 3 Ooh. remastered. Um, so it's not just... It's not just re-released, yeah. it's redone they, from the re- ground They're, they're going to make it look a lot prettier. Oh yeah, it looks it looks pretty good. And it's only got like a $40 price tag, don't for quote th- me. For three games, for it's three not bad games, at all. It's not bad no. at all. I mean, I'll wait a minute to see how it looks, and then yeah. I'll probably get it out of nostalgia purposes. Exactly. I never played that growing up. I mean, I know of the game, yeah. but it was just not one I got into. Well, I, I, got into you, I got into games late, gaming late. So. That's fair. I, I've been in it since day one. Um, yeah, I've seen the closet downstairs with all your systems. Yeah. Um... And it's, it's actually funny, too, because I played the shit out of Crash Bandicoot 2, and I did all the stuff, like where you have to unlock the crystals at the end of each level, and they kind of go up above the door so you can see what you've 100% out of each one of them. Gotcha. So I'd love to actually get the trophies for this. Nice. Um, the DLC that's coming out is uh, the Elder Scrolls Online. That's actually a big DLC. I actually just picked up the original Elder Scrolls Online last week to try and prepare for it, because it looks little, interesting. That was a little event for you. Yeah. Kept saying it wouldn't read and had to restart the system, and then all of a sudden it just popped up, and you're like, "All right, fine." 
Thank yeah, you. the first time I plugged it in, it didn't work. There was a corrupt disc or something. That's why I don't go for disc games anymore. It's always digital for me. But now, but you also have too much... Space. Uh, space or not enough space on your PS4. You got to go buy a Pro now. Get that extra space. Or no, I just got to get a new hard drive. Yeah, exactly. But then I'll lose PT, so I got to <laughs> be careful. Um, the other games that are coming out, there's uh, another DLC for Final Fantasy 15 that should be Gladius. I think no, his Gladius story. was already out. His story. So, uh, so no, one? Gladius is already out, and uh, or is he out? No, yeah, he's already been out, and then the uh, the next oh, one was. No, you uh, know what? It's a Final Fantasy fourteen expansion that's coming out. This oh, the Zodiac Age. Oh, no, no, sorry, the Zodiac Age was twelve. I'm Zodiac Age is that actually coming out in July. Oh, that okay. is on July eleventh. We're getting Final Fantasy twelve. Okay. So it's just some DLC and then the Crash Bandicoot game next month. So we'll see what we're gonna do with that. I'll um, be playing Marvel for the time being, so I'll probably be able to give you a better. Look, we've only played for you know, a handful a of hours days. right now, so I'll probably have some more info as the the end or the end end game stuff. Hopefully, I can get to that and see how that's working. Yes, I'll be in on that too a little bit. Well, yeah. you guys got anything else? I think I've talked enough for this podcast. Yeah. Like most people, probably. Really <clears throat> That's so fine. Real you got anything that going on you want to plug for them? Uh, nothing going on right now. Just uh, visit our Instagram and Twitter and YouTube page. Check us out, and uh, hopefully, I can get on there and stream myself more. It seems that you and Mike are the ones that usually do it. But yeah, you've been busy a lot lately yeah. too, so you've missed out on a few. But we'll pretend don't worry. like I'm busy. It's really not, but we'll say. <laughs> we'll get you back into the mix of things and get yep. you caught up to speed. Erica, do you have anything coming up that you want to plug? Um, Colossal Con, two and a half weeks. Pirate Ariel, it's coming ashore. Maybe super excited about it. Did you um, plan that pun? Because if not, that I was totally weird. did. Did you? Damn! I was really hoping that I was off so the great. top of the head because I was um, impressed. <clears throat> No, not really. Um, I like like gaming is new to me. I, I obviously grew up with an N sixty four and a Super Nintendo and stuff, but I just bought my own PS four and t- six months ago, seven months ago. So I've been t- playing a lot of Telltale, a lot of superhero games. It's kind of my forte. Speaking of Telltale, the Borderlands Tales from Borderlands. I already got it for free. Yeah, well, whoever's <laughs> listening, if you have the PSN, that's for free on. Yeah. PlayStation Plus. If you or... haven't played Batman Telltale, if you like Batman at all, play it. It's amazing. I've heard that's really Wait, good. you're not a really big fan of Batman, job. are you? Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm not. No, I don't have it tattooed on me in like three <laughs> different places or anything. No, so yeah. If yeah, you that'll want... go on our Instagram too. Um... <laughs> well, yeah, I'm and kidding. if you really wanted to see it, you can follow her on Instagram, Facebook, pretty much everywhere. What, we'll go ahead and. Uh, my plug on everything, all my apparatuses, is uh, Geeky Baby. Yeah, we'll go ahead and put it in the uh, meta too, so you guys can go ahead and follow along. I like that it's on all your apparatuses. It is everything. That's how you find me. It's just all over. It's the Snap, the Instagram, the Facebook, the Twitter, all the, of it. The, yep. the Twitters. And then uh, I'll actually be joining you in a couple of weeks for Colossal Con. We're going to do all that. You're bringing out the pirate aerial that we're working on, and I'm going to be doing Jack Sparrow to help promote the movie. Not that I'm on the movie, but what with it being... I'm going to be kind of... Yep, I'll and be Jack Sparrow. This will be after we've already seen it on day one. Yeah. Yep, in fact, uh, we'll be there... Uh, day one for the release will be at Rave, 7 o'clock. I'll be dressed as Jack Sparrow, handing out some goodies and enjoying the movie. Uh, and then we'll be in Sandusky, Ohio the following Saturday for yes. Colossal Con. I will not be dressed as Ariel because it is not appropriate. For no. Movies. For a movie theater? No. 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 I'll, be, <laughs> so. I'll be dressed as myself, so don't worry. Follow me on Facebook. Find me at The Real Anthony Dane Cosplay if you'd like. You can find me on Instagram, The Real Anthony Dane. Other than that, follow us as Casual Critics on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You can follow us Casual Critics. We don't really have a meta link for YouTube because we haven't reached 10,000 viewers yet. So please do us a favor and subscribe. Just That'll a change little now. Bit. You guys got a girl on the podcast. Well, we had Tony to begin with, but oh. this is a real one. Yeah, you got to have a female up in there sometimes. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go ahead and end it on that note. Thanks for that, guys. Hey. Bye. 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 Thank you. See you guys.